continuing my review of the various published settings available in Director 11, we get to the Shockwave tab. Use this tab to set options that determine the Shockwave player version, how images are compressed, how users interact with the movie, and quite a bit more here. First we get to Image Compression. This will set how you want your bitmap images compressed, which you'll always want to do when you're using Shockwave files. It will be published via the web. Select Standard to apply compression techniques used by Director in versions 4 through 7. This setting is suitable for graphics with fewer colors. JPEG will specify the image quality setting by moving the slider here left or right to a value between 0 and 100 percent. The higher the percentage, the less the image is compressed. You can think of this as the image quality setting. Zero is bad image quality but high compression. You'll probably want to experiment with settings, usually around 20 to 60, something in there, but experiment. Compression enabled lets you compress the sounds in your movie. Select this option and then set the level of compression from the kilobits per second menu right here. The default is 64. That's probably a good place to start. And then move down from there. Test your movie until you get audio file that is no longer acceptable and then move it back up to the last acceptable position. You probably usually want to convert stereo to mono, so there's a setting for that. Include cast member comments. Let's you include comments you might have entered in the comments field of the property inspector for each of your cast members. You can then use lingo or JavaScript syntax to access the comments in the DCR file. Next we have Allow Movie Scaling. Allows a Shockwave movie to be resized or stretched in a browser. This is probably not a good idea if you're using a lot of bitmap images because as those stretch they'll pixelate and get pretty rough looking indeed. However, if you're using a lot of director vector graphics, that's a good option because those vector graphics that you create here in the Tools palette will scale without distortion. Transport Control is next. This provides controls for rewinding, stopping, and stepping through the movie, usually a good idea. And then Volume Control lets users adjust the volume of the movie's soundtrack, always a good idea that. Next we have the HTML options in that tab here. At the very top you have your template setting. This setting and most of the others here lets you set how your movie will look in a browser. It's likely that your users will resize their browsers and this will control this feature. And the way your movie behaves when the browser size changes depends on the HTML option settings here in the dialog. For template you have Shockwave default. This uses an object and embed tag to display the shockwave. You also have other templates here. Delete shockwave, fit browser window, expands the shockwave to fill the entire browser window. Progress bar with image, displays a progress bar with background image while preloading the shockwave. This is probably the one that you see most common, that little shockwave preloader, but you can also do it with an image that you choose as well as center the shockwave. And there are more options here that you can read through the description. Here you can set the color of the HTML background. The default is white, but you can enter in a hexadecimal value or choose another color from the color chip. Below that you have the options for displaying that progress bar and displaying the logo. Those are the two most common things you'll notice when those shockwave files are loading, the director logo and that progress bar. Here in the Object Embed Rectangle section you have your stretch style. Here you can specify how your movie should resize or not resize. Stretch to fill causes any browser resizing to stretch the movie to fill the width and height parameters that you set right below there. Other options are no stretching, so it will just leave the default sizes of your shockwave file. Preserve proportions will not allow you to distort. It will keep the aspect ratio of the width to the height the same. And then the last one is expand stage size. 
will actually expand that stage size to fit your dimension setting right below there. Notice you also have stretch positions here for horizontal alignment and vertical alignment. The options are left, center, and right. This is another one of those settings where it's probably best to experiment with different options here. See how it turns out. Preview in the browser. Also be sure to publish the file and then open it in a browser to see the effect of these various sizing settings here. I find that all of these settings here for changing or not changing the size of the movie depending on the browser and what's going on with the browser a little bit tricky, hard to explain, probably better to demonstrate. But for the sake of time, I recommend that you experiment with these. Each director project probably requires its own settings to get the optimal user experience for that particular project.